yeah, this right here. So you, you can frame like this. You give, give it to me and Tathwalk. So you, you can just like take a picture of this moment right here. And you can put it on like the Smash Twitter, which is like Smash Picks that precede legendary events, basically. And you can just put that and probably get like hundreds of thousands of likes on Twitter. So here's, here's what's about to happen. I'm going to shut up until Tathwalk starts talking. Yeah, I got numbers on the. Oh. Oh. Yo, did he just walk up slowly and down smash? <laughs> he did. He really did, though. Oh, hacks. Are you going to let. <laughs> Folks, recently, you know, I have been kind of getting more into the commentary role of the Melee community. I, at the time of recording, I just did a tournament called Salt Mine with little notice the day before this happening. I also have been doing the one up weekly online for Melee commentary here and there. So. A lot for me to learn in my journey to become a top commentator in the Melee scene. And recently, Melee and Ami, a well-known media outlet slash podcast in the Melee scene, released a video about Bobby Scar, one of the most charismatic and well-known Melee commentators in the entire scene. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at this video and do a little bit of what people will really like, especially for the analytical fans out there, a little bit of react content, you know? We like doing a little bit of reacting here and there on the stream. We did the last one with the hugs video. Link to that in this corner up here. You guys know where I'm pointing at this point. Go click that, please. We want to watch it. Appreciate it very much. But if you're still here, how about we head over and we check out the video? It's a bit of a longer watch, too. And Tafokins is kind of the main guy behind this video. I think you should see, like, what an established guy like Tafokins is. If you don't know who Tafo is, Tafo is a long... Uh, tenured coach with the scene, has done a lot of stats for the scene for a long time. Shout out to Tafo Stats back in the day. Holding it down for CLG and C9, respectively, in his times with them. Yeah, I want to check this out and see what this is all about. I think um, Scar at his peak and when he's really interested in a set and invested, why he's one of the best commentators. And I think this set really highlights um, some of Scar's strengths that even today I don't really see as... Um, that I don't really see that many commentators do. So there's a few things and that I want you guys to look out for is that I think um, Scar plays the hype wrestling match uh, announcer really well in that he hypes the match. He, as an audience member, you get really excited at how Scar sets the stage in the tone of the set, why it matters, what do the players have against each other. Um, I think that's one of Scar's best strengths, is that he truly gets you excited in a way that most other commentators really don't. Um, he brings the energy. Before he goes on, I want to see immediately that whole, like, pro wrestling commentator such announcer thing is, I think, one of the best ways, if you play it right, to hook viewers into a set. Because you can have people who do, like, the standard, very esports, esports, esports kind of approach, you know? Standard greeting, all that good stuff, very professional. But if you get that, like, go that extra mile and put, like, some real emphasis slash character and personality behind what you're saying on the microphone, you can really hook people in. And Scar, as to at, not to as Tafo was just explaining, does a fantastic job of that. And it actually, is, it's, it's inspired me, like, once I've, like, really, like, settled down and into, like, a block to really take that approach, too. If you've been listening to me at all, whether you're on One Up or Salt Mine or Future, like, if I was on a nightclub by the time you're watching this, you probably heard me kind of make those expressions being, like, more so during a set, like, oh, he's doing this part right now. I want to see how X player reacts to this. Or, or what I want to see from this person is that they really need to do blah, blah, blah. Or what I, what I like to do a lot at, a, at, like, our regionals here in New England is that we'll do, like, the very, we'll set the stage. Like, you know, it's grand finals. These two people have taken this path to get to this point. Now let's see who the better player is. And, like, you had those tense situations in a set, too, where it's, like, this person's coming back from, like, a 2-0 deficit. It's now 2-2. It's game five. We're, like, halfway through the game. The big question I always ask with like a little extra tone, and I'll try and personate it here right now, is will we see a reset? Will it happen? Will X player be able to fight back and all that good stuff? Is it given that passion and not being like too over the top, but having like good like sense of like, okay, yeah, I'm really excited for this. That's like what Scar is good at. I think he can influence a lot of different people to take a similar approach to that or like kind of like do a yoink and twist. Where, like they'll yoink that kind of style from Scar, but they also give it their own personal flavor, you know? I want to go through the set and just really point it out and kind of give my kind of narrative to Scar's narrative and just show you how awesome it is. Oh, Mango playing pink oh to spite him. Hex playing blue fox. Yeah, this wow. is definitely the hate. I thought this Yo, was 
So okay, what, I, what I'm seeing immediately from Scar here is just pay more attention to what the commentators are saying and not so much the play. Scar has an existing story that he's bringing up into the set, which kind of sets the stage of what the mood can be between A, the set going on, and B, the commentators' dynamic as they're going through the set. Because it's like, all right, Scar just mentioned there's this beef between Hacks and Mango, and Mango is not playing Fox or Falco. He's playing Falcon, a character he does not main for the record, too. And it's like, okay, and Hacks used to play Falcon for a long time. Public has very much come out and said how much he doesn't like he doesn't like playing Falcon looking back on it, how the character isn't that good compared to other characters in the game. So it's like a big like, oh shit. Like, is Mango actually gonna beat Hacks with Falcon and all that jazz? In this set, I know what happens in this set. And I just want to pay attention to what, how Scar is delivering it all for everybody watching, too. There's been a conversation between these two players for a long time okay. where Mango was even making fun of him on the mic yesterday, saying every conversation I ever have with Hacks, he complains about Falcon. But right in then there, he, Scar gives this piece of information, right? Mango, Scar, Mango despises the way that Hacks thinks about Fox and Falcon. And Mango is playing Falcon to prove a point to Hacks, right? Normally Mango plays Falco or Fox, you know, Spacey, and um, Hacks was expecting, um, Hacks was expecting like a Spacey battle, but instead sees this. Now, normally, if you don't set this up correctly, you can, um, you know, a commentator may be like, oh, like Mango's sandbagging, he's not trying, oh, what a joke of a set, right? Like, you can easily tee this off the wrong way, right? Right then and here, like, Scar is showing the personal level of beef and hyping this match up by saying, like, these people, they don't hate each other, but Mango hates the way that Scar, uh, that Pax describes you know, Falcon as a character. So really compelling right from the get-go in the first three seconds. Yeah, so he, he's already hooked you with a story, which I kind of mentioned like both on Tafo's end and my end. There's, there's already a story being established here. And what Tafo said that was key there was that if this is anybody else, like this, this is like a round two like group of commentators, like some other group of commentators, they might just, oh, he's not really trying that hard. They might, like those commentators could have been out of the loop uh, what the conversation between Mango and Hacks has been behind the scenes and like off the screen on Twitter at an event like this or somewhere else. It's like, oh, we actually know the bit of the backstory here. Here's that backstory between these two and how, what it means to the little bit more of the wrinkles of details to this set. And you want to play on that throughout this whole set. I witnessed the money match at Evo 2014 and Mango bodied my dude, Hax. Really? But with we'll Falcon. see if he, with Falcon, Falcon vs. Fox in the hotel room, no recording set up. Ooh, oh, it's, it's Nobody to watch yeah, but me. That... Now you are in the energy of this question will form in your head naturally. Um, can Hax, you know, Hax wants revenge. Hax wants to prove that he can beat this, you know, in his mind, a trash secondary. Yeah, and it also means, it, it, can, like I say, it just helps the viewer investment. Like, at the end of the day, the commentators definitely want to, like, he, enhance the viewer experience and also entertain them as the tournament progresses, whether it's the start of the tournament, the middle of the tournament, or the end of the tournament, the casters that are assigned to do those parts of a big tournament like Big House, they're here to just add to the stakes that is the event. And Scar has done that in the first, like, 50 or 48 seconds of this set, setting more of the tone that Taffa has been talking about and like, keeping that storyline arc of their beef. Last time they played the set, what will change today? How will these two each other know 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 their play styles and how different this is for Hacks playing a different Falcon, playing Mango's Falcon, which isn't real again, and seeing if he can prove that point and like he doesn't want to lose to Mango's secondaries or Mango wants to show like, yeah, you were wrong the entire time. I was right. You suck. LOL. <laughs> oh, the read. We need yeah, the emphasis too, and like. Scar can take like these like simple like bits like oh he got a big read there and he just the emphasis that he gives on it too where he goes ooh like he saw as he heard him just there the emphasis he had behind like such a simple thing like that roll read into a knee like he just makes like him he gives it impact which makes it like yeah he's so passionate about what's happening on the screen right now too. Okay, this is kind of hype, man. I, I would never expect Mango I think to that pick the, his own color against the, him. Picking the color is almost like you rock bottom the rock. You know yeah, what I mean? That, you use his Ooh, speaking of pro wrestling, god damn. That's like, that, so like Scar, as like Tapo kind of alluded to there, he has like this pro wrestling style commentator presence. And what he just said there only adds to it because that is a huge thing. As, as a fellow wrestling fan, like I, and you feel that reference too. 
So like you'll see different commentators of different kinds like sprinkle in these pop culture references, whether it's like music, a movie, a different video game, sports, something of that matter that'll have a connection with some kind of viewer out there. And that just happened for me there. Like I felt that impact and I'm like, damn, it could actually be like that, which only helps the viewer though. He's reading, he's, so I'll elaborate on what Taffo was saying. So not every set, not every set in commentary can be like this fabricated, produced, sorry, I hit the mic, I'm so sorry, fame and editing, I'm so sorry, don't, don't, don't quit, please, I didn't mean to do that, I promise. Um, so again, yeah, not every set is going to be of like this pro wrestling-esque nature. And like every set's gonna be different. Like some of them could be a little bit more low key, especially at a local, or it could be like a little bit more. All right, it could be more high level. You want to be more esports, esports, esports approach. But a set that has so much history, like this. Another good example would could fit like this pro wrestling esque kind of presentation is something like Leffen vs Mango, Armada Mango, Armada Mewtwo King, uh, Hbox versus most top players like Leffen, Plup. Sets like that, or even like some good mid level sets like uh, Zane vs Wizzy. Like those can kind of fit that kind of mold. But it really depends. You got he's so Scar is reading the room and picking the right set to kind of bring that presentation to. It's like, it's like that kind of presentation could be also be good in a salty suite at a major. Apex 2015, for example, is a great example of that. And like anything that happens in the future at the time of stream. Yeah, and that's it, dude. Hacks takes that game clean. Yeah. Will he get Mango to switch? Or will so. this be a prideful set to the bloody finish? And then these little tidbits are just so nice, right? Like it brings up the energy right it's posing this like question with this tone of is he going to do it right oh like there's a way of doing that and being or, or being boring about it and be like oh mango lost game one maybe he should switch right there are so many little things um that you can just like the idea is the same but the phrasing and the tone and the energy that you put into it and the volume you put into it make a role of difference absolutely agree like, absolutely agree. It also happens just, like, with streamers, too, I feel like. Like, there are streamers out there who, like, you know, may not be, like, as articulate or as, like, committed to what they do as opposed to other ones. And, and it pretty much kind of falls through over into the commentary aspect in esports, more specifically Melee in this case. Like, there might be, like, a very basic answer. Like, maybe they'll, like, it, they'll kind of read the room based on how, like, the set is going. Like, oh, like, this happened. Is there, are they going to switch to X character? But, yeah, look what Scar is doing. Like, Scar is, like, he's staying invested in, like, the overarching story that is, like, the story that's already been established with Mango and Hacks at this point. So it's like, okay, Hacks won game one. Mango, you know, probably thinking about it a little bit more, but he's still confident that he still wants to prove a point to Hacks and saying, yeah, I can beat you with my Falcon in tournament at this big event in a best of five. I'm still going to stick to it, and like, he'll still stick at it and go from there. So let's go back into the set and see what happens in the next game. And, and I think this is the game where there's a very famous line from commentary that has pretty much been carried on throughout this. So I think, let's see what happens. Overwatch's recovery is a little bit worse. Oh, yeah. good back air. Gonna go for the stomp. Great tech. Oh, oh, Wait for that, so big. My son went for goal. I really love this, right? Like he that. went for the knee, right? Scar being also a Falcon main and still being relatively good, right? He's seeing that Mango is going for something unnecessary, right? Like, and again, phrasing is so on point here where he's going, he went for the knee? Like, um, and then he elaborates on it. And it's like, the way that you can make this boring is being like, oh, like back air would have been a hitbox here. Like that would have gone the edge guard. And then he could just like, um, there just the inflection of he went for that knee is just so awesome. And then he explains and says he could have gone for back air. And then he goes into this part. Yeah. That was a little bit different. Let's listen to it. Respect, yeah. A little bit of me of him saying I'm I'm that much better yeah. and I don't need this stock. <laughs> and then he turns into a little bit of a joke too. He has he, he he so he goes from like oh he went for that. Then it kind of explains a little bit more why he might have did that. Imagine how backer would have been better. He's like all right. And then he turns into a little bit of a fun little gag, which is good. He kind of brings like all different assets around. He gets the hype part, the more technical slash analytical side. And you get a nice, nice little joke at the end too. So you get you get a pretty good exchange there. I'm but, uh, you your own but you know what Hacks is saying. No, I think you do need that. Yeah, I think you do need that edge guard, and I think you should take me seriously. Look and then, yeah, then he get, then he goes to the hacks POV too. So he's not just so much focusing on Mango, which is like the worry of like biased commentary potentially, but no, he's also thinking about the other player as well. So the paint, putting that unbiased picture as he should as like a professional caster at this point, being like, all right, so what's Hacks thinking right now too, though? What's like the other player thinking as they're going along with the set? And like, okay, he went for that. Interesting. He's gonna go for it again later. Blah blah blah. Look 
he's putting this banter right where he's presenting to the audience this question right like he's saying yo like he's presenting to you this idea that mango is disrespecting him that like he's doing all this unnecessary stuff he could have gone for a complete thing and he's doing the way he's projecting and sometimes you don't always get this right there's a risk to to making these kind of call outs but mango going this is he's playing disrespectfully like and then he poses the questions like hacks are you gonna let him do that to you? yeah right? and then i think as an audience member as you're watching that you're kind of going like yeah like hacks like are you gonna let him do that to you um all right so oh yeah this right here so you you can frame like this you give it, give it to me and tapo so you, you can just like take a picture of this moment right here and you can put on like the smash twitter which is like smash Bros. that receive legendary events basically and you can just put that and probably get like hundreds of thousands of likes on Twitter. So here's here's what's about to happen. I'm gonna shut up until Savile starts talking. Yeah, right now. Yeah. I got numbers on the oh. Yo, did he just walk up slowly and down smash? <laughs> he did. He really did though. Oh hacks. Are you gonna let So there's the question. Play by play commentary. This was play by play commentary. Whether this is it's a pretty non traditional way of looking at it, right? Where it's like, did he just walk up slowly and down smash? Um, even though it's phrased as a question, he it is literally, you know, commenting what has happened on the screen. That Mingo just as Falcon literally just walked up, read a spot dodge, and just down smash, right? And there are really creative ways, rather than just kind of ring on the screen, where it brings out and fleshes out this thing. We, we talk about disrespect. Scar is writing this theme of disrespect, mm -hmm. right? Right from the get-go. He's saying, mm -hmm. Mango is disrespecting Hacks by playing Falcon. Mango is disrespecting Hacks by going for unnecessary moves rather than guarantee. And then Mango disrespects Hacks even more by going for this super mega call-out on the down smash. Like, who does that? Right. To me, I'm just like, wow, like he's really getting me into this like hacks versus mango dialogue that's going on. Um, and you can see it here. Yeah. So kind of like the big thing about that is like with that huge call out there is that Scar is presenting that super simple situation and just adding that personal take on it or that personal flavor to it that only Scar can do. Because he's already painted this whole story, which is the big thing I'm going to mention throughout this whole thing is that Scar is telling the story throughout the entire set about the beef between these two, what's going on on screen, and what it means to either player of what happens in either result. And what's happening on screen only adds to the story. And he's like, wow, Mango is just trying to blatantly BM on Hacks. And Hacks is just doing his best to not let that happen. And Tafo has said it. Scar said, I think just recently in the commentary, he's like, oh, you're going to let him do that? Like, you're really going to let him do that right now? But no, yeah, we're seeing it happen right in front of us. So yeah, just my big thing, as I just mentioned, it's just like you want to be able to tell a story, especially at a higher level when you're casting, just really like bring that investment in. We went to FD. I, I'll tell you I just love his excitement. To me, it seems like Scar is just an exciting kid, right? Like who is hyping up and going like, I play Falcon. I love Falcon. I love seeing Falcon succeed. I like these two people that are playing. I love Hacks. I love Mango. I love the Ryan Mango fans there, right? Like when you have that conversation with um, people, right? Like when you have, and sometimes the energy level gets a little bit much, but right, like I draw energy from people who are passionate about what they do, right? Like mm -hmm. when I am going out with somebody, I'm like, hey, like, what do you do? Like, and like, it, there's a real difference between like, oh, like I, I just like work and that's fine. I'm not judging a person, but like, there's something to be said of like, yeah, I'm like doing this thing. Like, I love it. Right. And it goes like, oh, like really like tell me more about it. Um, and granted that conversation doesn't happen every time, but like with Scar, there's just such a contagious energy that I'm just like, yeah, like, let me be a part of this. Mm -hmm. exactly what just happened. He, he brings people in, whether it's a viewer, a casual or someone related to the community in some way and kind of hooks them in, which is what I've kind of mentioned earlier in this video already. I mean, like, he sets the stage for the set, which Tafo's mentioned too. And like that's like the kind of energy that I want to see for more personalities. And they can be in differing ways. So like, they can have that energy and talk about like, something else about Melee, give a different role to see it entirely. Like, have that aura that makes people just want to keep coming back. Whether you run like a local tournament, a regional tournament, you compensate at your local or regional every time it happens. You bring people in and you want them to stay. And that's like what Scars Aura has done for this set and probably why that has aged so well. Because in the iconic moments that happen in this set, there is his narrative that only adds to the moment even more. If like you see like these insane moments happen, you have the right people on the mic, it will only make it more memorable for people who go back and watch it all these years later. Because this is from 2014. 
and it is currently 2022 when I'm watching this back with Tafo in this video. And yeah, I can still remember the set very well as opposed to some of the sets that happened like a couple days ago. You know, some of the friends are still in my mind. I can always remember what happens in this. It's that it's that crazy kind of thing. You get the right personality, people will remember it so well. So I think um, you know, it's more or less going to be thematically the same. I don't want to repeat myself the whole part, but all in all, like my short summary here is. I really love the energy that Scar brings, and I think the angle he goes for is like a, a wrestler commentator, um, you know, who's <laughs> calling a ring match to the person that's just chilling in a hotel room, just watching Melee, right? And he's making his comments, but he's inviting you in um, into what's going on to a world of thought. Um, the an the analytic the analytical side of his commentary is actually really good for its time, and also. The story that a lot of people probably didn't know. People didn't know that you know Hacks and Mango had this beef, right? And again, like you can, um, I view you know the quality of the, the match itself, like you know ordering meat. Like there are some sets that are just gonna be really hard to commentate, like and make exciting, right? You can make Peach Samus, for example. I had to commentate like high level Peach Samus. It was incredibly hard. I didn't like doing because it, it was a lot of just like waiting. A lot of different trades back and forth all the time. You had to make it entertaining somehow, whether you talk about the game or talk about something else. There are some like very tough sets out there where you get like two mid tiers playing each other and you don't know a lot about either one. You guys gotta, gotta just shoot the shit if you're Kokami until something like really hype happens and it kind of adds to the moment. Like with when slash if you are casting, you will come across like sets like that. It is tough. How the fuck do you even content a set? That's a very good question, Isaiah. Like that's like that that's also Kind of like the beauty of what comes out of Melee is that it can be seen as like you can bring your own personal brand slash flavor to a set and do the best that you can to make it look good. For real, I'm not even kidding. I think it just depends who you are. Like with Scar, the way that Tafo has described it here, like Scar brings this charisma, presence, and articulation that nobody else in the scene really had slash has to this point that just is hard to match. And you bring it to somebody like Waff who can measure that really, really well. And it only complements the style as the set goes on. Scar is telling a story. He's hiding the big moments. He is giving the backstory about the set too, going in. He's like, all right, this is what happened. H H Mango said this. Hax is like, all right, you're not going to DM me in this set. Let's play. And here we are. And like once at a high level, at a high level, especially if you follow the scene very, very well for top level players, if you can bring that sort of energy, especially on like a big stage, like Big House, Genesis, Smash Con, Shine, Get on my level, low tide city, all those different kind of events. It will only help you in the in the in the future because when those hype moments happen, like oh, did he just walk up slowly and down smash? People will remember that because they remember the moment itself of, of in gameplay, the crowd reaction too. If there's a crowd and the commentators being like, "Yo, like this thing just happened. What's going on? Is this player gonna let that happen again? What's going on?" Like some like really like simple line. And the other big thing that I've learned from this video that I want to work on some more too is the show not tell part because what they're doing is that they're not going like totally play by play they're doing a like, pretty general good mix of like the story what's going on in the set but also like what could have happened if this happened blah 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 the show not tell they're making things really simple for people to understand you know they don't go too in depth to things which is great too do you have to be a good player to be a good commentator no you, you do not have to be a good player to be a good commentator as long as you have the presence the articulation and like some like kind of like personal thing that other people don't have when it comes to the mic I think in over time, it will help you as a caster in the future. This is my personal take, of course, because like, I have like learned from watching a lot of sports growing up. Professional wrestling is the big one for commentators, which is what Tafo's made a great comparison to in this video. And also like listening to people like Scar, Waff, Phil especially is one of my favorite com commentators of all time. I will say that right now is that they all bring like this sort of like different perspective on the game. And each one brings something different to the table for me. We know Waff, the more laid back, fun having commentator. Phil, like the very, he's very similar to Waff. You know, he's, he can be a little more analytical, kind of talk about more things, having these good moments here and there. But then you got Scar, who kind of is his own person too. Yeah. Waff, Waff's one of the, he's Waff's probably like in my top five. I think like Waff's in my top five. Phil's probably towards the top for me. And then like Tof, Tof's probably towards the, uh, probably towards the bottom of the top five. That's not a bad thing at all though. Scar is probably like third or second, I would say. Like, you know, like they all have something about them that just kind of resonate with the people that we're seeing come onto the mic today. And like once people kind of learn more and just keep practicing at it and like learning of what they uh, my favorite of all time is ooh, it's tough. Like it's probably I think personally, it's probably Phil. I'm not going to lie. It's like Phil 
Scar is up there. I'm not sure if he's my favorite, though. I've always really enjoyed... Um, now, my, my commentary is good. I haven't really heard it in a while, though. Like, those, those two come to mind. Uh, I also mean Slime. I mean, Slime is a whole, like, different beast, though. He has, he has a good blend of, like, the esports stuff, but also, like, the very comedic side of things, too. He he, he kind of brings a really good bet, um, best of both worlds to the mic, which I like a lot. Like, my, my taste can kind of vary. I'm pretty open to, like, most commentaries most of the time, to be fair. But, like, those are the ones that come to mind right away. And, like, you know, Ludwig, obviously, you know, very similar to Slime, has has that charisma. Yeah, very, very Bobby Scar-esque is Lud, because, you know, has the charisma, has, like, the passion, has the humor, especially, which what people what people got really into him for when he was kind of popping off as a commentator and then over as a streamer in these days. It's like, you have that knack for it. And you bring it to a game like this, and it will just serve you well in the future. So I, what, I want, what I want to see is just people have that passion, you know? Bring that passion to the table. Sit down on a microphone with somebody else that you really like commentating with. Just have fun. You know, tell those stories. To point out those big moments. Show, not tell. Stuff like that. And at a high level, of course, everyone is different into the day to what they like in commentary. But that, that's just the nature of the world. Apples and oranges. People will have a great time with what they're, what's going on. I think somewhere out there, someone will like it. Most people may like it. Maybe someone won't. But that's okay. I'm sure people don't like my commentary. I understand why. I'm still kind of learning on the job, too. It's totally fine with me. Sure, listen to somebody else. That's fine. So, yeah, there's that whole element, too. I know it's a bit of a tangent to end this bit on, but that's how I feel. And if you in chat either disagree with me, sign off in the comment below. But if you agree, feel free to elaborate on your own kind of take on, like, what makes Scar good or what you want to see in casters today. So, yeah, the big thing that Tapo made a big deal of at the end which I really, really am thinking about genuinely too, that's something I really want to work on this year, is the big thing he mentioned is complimenting another commentator. That is huge. No matter who you are, what level you're on, you need, keyword need, to find that commentator who compliments you so well and you just mesh super well. What's good about Scar is that most people can mesh with him really well and know what he's going to do in a set because you know he's very well known. They know him for a pretty long time, like Waff probably has. It is so key. And I think when you watch my block with, with Trey last night, it was starting to show. Like, our synergy was kind of starting to come together, too. And I think it will tonight, too, for Garbage Connection. But I want to work on that so big. And I want to ask, like, my commentator, Quam Co Cameron, questions more. Like, kind of have that back and forth more often, whether it's about the game, shooting the shit, or something else. You need to find that chemistry for the commentator, whether it's you, you need a couple blocks to kind of build that foundation, or you can just be right off the gate and have that energy, you know? It can vary from caster to caster, absolutely. But at the end of the day, he's a bit loud, by the way, so one second. At the end of the day, it might take some time to find it. But I think with the right practice and just being aware of what you want slash need to work on as a caster, I think... Like, once you get there and build it, you can kind of synergize with most people you commentate with. Whether you kind of go and like, you pass the mic off to them, they pass it back to you. You have those exchanges that kind of kind of chain into a really good conversation about the game, the in general, or the set at hand. It only makes it a better watch, not just for the viewers, but when you also watch it back to put it in the highlight reel too. Like I watch some of my sets back. Like sure, they come out good, but I always think, okay, what can I do better? Or like, even when a block has, like, okay, what am I going to do better for this next block with this person potentially? And I always want to think about, okay, I want to ask them more questions, or I want to like let them talk a little bit more, and I'll take a little bit more of a back seat so they can have the tight moments as well. Like, there's going to be a lot of things that I think about, not just tonight, but for the rest of the year too. And if I watch this back like ten months from now, seeing what I've learned since this, we'll see what the difference is. So, future Stell, you watch this right now. What did you work on? If you're comfortable to decide to watch this video. What have you worked on either right now when you watched or what you worked on earlier this year, depending on when you watched it? So sign up in the comments below. But all right, I think I'll cap off this video here. A really good and insightful video from Tapo. I mean, fittingly enough, Tapo is the stats guy of Melee. He's been it for a long time. He's a great coach. So thank you again. If you, if you liked the video, like, comment, subscribe, all of that good jazz. I'll see you guys in the next Melee React. Who knows what it will be? All right. Catch you next time.